in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus. We ask that all doors of churches is open this morning, Father God. Be it physically, Father God, or be it by live streaming, or whatever the case may be, but that your word is being heard by your people this morning, Father. So we thank you and we praise you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, as I said, this morning we're going to be coming from the book of Psalms, chapter 16. And Psalms is an Old Testament book. And again, we just want to do what God has led us to do, called us to do, and prepared us to do in so many ways. So we thank you again this morning. In Psalms chapter 16, verse 1, it reads, Preserve me, O God, mm. for in thee do I put my trust. It says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. This is a song written by King David. King David. And uh, he's asking God to preserve him. If we want to give us a title this morning, our title would be, You Can Have Joy That's Smart. You Can Have Joy That's Smart. See, sometimes we have joy, or we, 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 we'll travel the word joy as to laughter. Laughter. Sometimes our laughter is not smart laughter. See, sometimes we laugh for the wrong reasons. It's not wise. The word smart can also be translated as wise. Making smart choices, making wise choices. So David here is saying, preserve me, O God, for in you do I put my trust. See, in you, God, I am being wise. I'm being smart. And in you, by me doing this, I will find joy. I will find joy. You can have joy that's smart. Smart joy. Smart joy is not laughing at someone else's downfall. It's not laughing at someone else's misfortune. It's not laughing at someone else's weakness. It's not laughing at someone else's looks. It's not laughing at someone else's smell. That's not smart joy. That's not smart happiness. That's not smart decisions. So David is, is asking God, he said, I preserve me, O oh God, for I put my trust in you. See, being making smart choices will cause God to preserve you in who you are. And take you to where you trying to go by making smart choices. Having smart joy. Amen. Let's go on. Let's go on. Verse 2. Oh, my soul, mm. thou hast said unto the mm -hmm. Lord, mm -hmm. thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee. It, it, listen, David said that it, it, on my soul, see I need to explain this to you too, because this latter part, he said, my soul have said unto the Lord, you are my Lord. First of all, he said, my soul says unto you, Lord, that you are Lord. He recognized that God is Lord. Mm. He recognized this. Smart joy. He recognized that his soul is in the Lord. But the latter part said, my goodness extends not to you. What, what did he say? My goodness extends not to you. That sounds like that's a negative. A negative. Not. Extend not. In other words, it don't go to you. That's the way we see it. But that's not the way it is. See, it is being translated by saying, you, my, oh my God, and there is no good beyond you. That's what he said. If I try to extend beyond you, God, there's no good. This is what he said. He, he's not saying to God that, 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 that uh, uh, my goodness is being not. So you have to understand the language barrel of this time. This is not your common English that you speak today. Where one word got a thousand meanings. Even though it's spelt the same. Or one word is pronounced the same but it has two thousand meanings. 
This is not a, this is your Chaldean, this is your aromatic, this is your Hebrew language that's being spoken. So in order for you to understand it, you got to do your investigation. He is saying that there have no good beyond or apart from you, God. My goodness does not extend beyond your goodness. My joy does not extend beyond your joy. My wisdom does not extend beyond your wisdom. This is what David is saying. It does not extend. In other words, he's saying to God, you are the highest of my joy. You are the wisest of my smartness. That's who you are. And there's nothing but good that extends from you. So you can have joy that is smart joy. Not silly joy. Sometimes we laugh at the wrong things. Sometimes we make fun of the wrong things. The wrong people. The wrong places. Excuse me. Sometimes we do these things. Because we don't understand the joy of the Lord. The brother wrote, he said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hmm. My strength. Let's go on. We're still in Psalm chapter 16. And we let me introduce you something. See, David, David was 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 was, was ascribed as a perfect man. A perfect man. He, that's like because God chose him as a little ruddy boy of his father's house. Father had a whole lot of boys. A whole lot of them. But David was the youngest and, and he chose him. He chose David. David had issues. He didn't always make the wise choices. He didn't always make the smart choices. His joy wasn't always that of, of, of being, being a smart joy. It was, it, he had issues. He was he dysfunctional. He had that. But yet God saw David as a perfect specimen to be used for his purpose. And he used him. See, David depended solely on God. Christ cried out for preservation to the one who was his only rescue. David did the same thing that Christ did. Christ knew that he could not call on anyone but his father. This is why when he's on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, why? Mm -hmm. Why am I so why, 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 why have you forsaken me? He knew that God was the only one that he could call on. He knew that God was the only one that he could trust in. He knew that his joy relied only in God. Jesus had a joy that was wise. That was smart. Can't depend on man. He even said at God. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I know when my help comes. David made a statement. He, told, he said, I will look into the hills. Psalms 122, 121. He said, I look into the hills from which come my help. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Have that joy that's smart. That's wise. You know, throughout Jesus' 30-something years on earth, he never called upon man to deliver him from anything. He never called on man to deliver him from anything. As a matter of fact, he said in the Psalms again, he said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. Psalms 24, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, 24 and 1. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell within. I have a sheep on a thousand hills. He never called on man for anything. But when he spoke, he spoke to the heavenly father. And he said, going away, he said, in my father's house is many matches. If it was not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may. Well, he said, I'm going to come again too. I'm going to come again to get you. Amen. And so that where I am, there you may be also. And he said, if I go, I won't leave you comfortless. I am smart enough in the joy that I have with my father being able to do the thing that he said that he would do that he would not leave you comfortless. That's Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus was around, he fully confessed God. My goodness is nothing apart from you. That's what David has said here. God. Not that he's denying God, mm. but that his goodness is nothing apart from him. 
My goodness extended not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth. My goodness extends not to thee. Thank you, Mary Beth, for going back there. But to the saints who are in the earth and to the excellency in whom all is all my delight. Hmm. God, goodness extends to the saints who are in the earth and to the excellency in whom all my delight. See, God wants to know something here. That not only is he extending his goodness, his mercy, his joy, his blessing to you, but he extended also to me. He extended also to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Even a zero got a place with God. Mm -hmm. We all have a number that has been numbered by God. Mm -hmm. This is why the song is saying, I want to be in that number. I want to be mm -hmm. in that number. When all the saints mm -hmm. call home, mm -hmm. I want to be in that number. And I don't want to be a half a number because there ain't no half a number. It's a whole number. Because 99 and a half won't do. That's something else. Mm -hmm. Got to be 100. So he said, I, I, want, I want to be there. And God is letting us know that if we have this smart joy that we truly can be in that number. David is saying that we can be in that number because the goodness extends not to you only but to all the saints of the earth mm. who all are God's delight. Mm. And see, if you look at this deeper, look at it deeper in pertaining to Jesus. God sent Jesus to earth as a smart, as a wise choice to deliver man from sin. And when God sent him to earth, this is what I'm saying. To do this, he just didn't send Jesus here and just take care of Jesus only. The thing that he extended to Jesus were he also extended to man on earth. Why? Because Jesus made a statement. He said, the things that I do, ye shall do. And greater things shall you do. Mm -hmm. So the same power, the same anointing that Jesus had. Amen. We can have the same thing. God extended that same joy, the same power and anointing that Jesus had. Jesus said, we are hairs and joint hairs with the other word. We are sisters and brothers with him now. <laughs> God becomes our father. See, a lot of times in our upbringing in the churches, we <laughs> recognize the name God. God. We, we recognize that name. We say God created. God did. Oh my God. God, God, did. God, 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 did. we recognize the name. But what we fail to recognize is the name of Jesus. Because most people think they want in this name. Amen. Mm. Well, listen to this right here. Jesus said that I come to do the will of my Father. I come to do the will of my Father. And, and, and except you come by me, you can't get to the Father. So while you street, I'm going to put it to you in, 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 in a, a terms you're going to understand. You know in, in, in corporation and jobs, whatever it is, in jobs and businesses and stuff like that, you have what they call a, a ranking order. Corporate ladder. Mm -hmm. Corporate and I'm the janitor right now. And as a janitor, I just can't walk up to the matter of fact, the penthouse. I can't do it. 
I got to go to my senior supervisor and talk to him about the situation. And hopefully he ain't got enough staff to go to the penthouse. But he may not have enough staff to go to the penthouse. So that's still, amen. There are ladders, runs to take to get to that point. Jesus is saying, until you come through me, but by me, you ain't getting to God. No. So why are you screaming, oh my God, you need to be saying, Jesus, talk to God for me. <laughs> Jesus, help me. Jesus, because I know now you're sitting on the right hand of the throne, make it intersection for me. In other words, you're sitting there by God talking on my behalf. Now I know somebody said, oh, that anyway, you can go straight to God if you want to. Well, if you go to Jesus, you're going to God. Because if you got a, 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 a partner, you got a junior, and you got a senior. If you're talking to the junior, if you're he, right, brother, you're talking to the senior. Mm -hmm. Because the junior represents the senior. Mm -hmm. So, junior Jesus represents senior God. So, if you want to talk to God, talk to junior senior, Jesus. That, that's about as plain as I can make the thing. You got to go through. You, I have to make my joy be smart. That's what I do. I know sometimes we have, as kids, we have a tendency we want to run to mama and talk to mama about certain, certain, certain things. We try to be slick first. Now sometimes we'll go to dad and ask dad about stuff that we know mama's supposed to be taking care of anyway. And daddy will tell us, now you know mama, mama you go, go here, mama. You got to go to your mama first. If something need, I need to know about, she'll bring it to me. That's the order of things. Mm -hmm. That's the order of things. So, 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 so David, David is making a claim that, listen, Jesus appeared as a man in his uh, uh, relation to God as a brother in his relation to me. That's how Jesus appeared. But, my joy is not in Jesus. My joy is in hypocrisy of life mm. avenues of success. The hypocrisies of life avenues of failure. That's where my, my joy lies. But I realize I can have joy that's smart, that's mm -hmm. wise. I don't have to laugh at nobody, that's a shortcoming. I don't have to be disappointed in what I didn't get, didn't have, didn't see, didn't why, what, what, I don't have to do that. So let, let's go on. I, I want y'all to understand, that the, and that if there's ever something that's being said that you do not understand, please let us know. Amen. See, this, this particular testimony what David is talking about is also is comparable to a testimony that was made in Psalm 73. Uh, uh, let me go to 73. Mm -hmm. Psalm 73. Mm -hmm. I want to look at verse 25. Psalm 73, verse 25. Mm -hmm. 73 and 25. Mm -hmm. Whom have I mm -hmm. in heaven? Mm -hmm. But thee. But thee. And there is none upon earth mm -hmm. that I desire beside thee. Who have I in heaven but for thee? Who, he mm -hmm. says. Whom have I in heaven but you, God? Mm -hmm. Who am I in heaven, have I in heaven but you, Jesus? Because now you are sitting at the right hand of God. Talking about me. Asking God, Lord, for God, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Who have I in heaven? I word have now. Who sits in the heaven talking about me? And there's none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Desire Jesus first and foremost in order to reach God who sits mm -hmm. in the heavens. Smart joy. Smart choices. Wise God. Jesus sit there. 
talking to God, asking God to send down a fresh anointing upon you. Asking God to let his glory flow from heaven to earth upon you. Jesus said, I don't want them to think that they have to deal in their own self-will, God, a father, but in yours. Now, so we tell Jesus, we said, now, as we go back to Psalms 119, 69, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Said to one, it's good for me that I've been afflicted. It is good for me that I've been afflicted, and now I may learn your statutes. 69, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept your word, your commandments, your statutes, your ordinance, your law, your rules and regulations. Wise joy. Wise joy is incorporated into one thing, and that is your loving service to God. As you follow Jesus. Let's go on. Let's go on. Their sorrow. Verse 4. Shall be multiplied. Your sorrow shall be multiplied. But hasten after another God. Oh, who hasten after another God. That's not a smart choice. <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. Not in God's eyes. Amen. That's not a smart choice. To hasten after other gods. And on earth we call thee with the little G gods. False idols. Mm. False, false, false what? Idols. False idols. Mm. False idols. I wear this right here not because I worship mm. this. I just wear it because it look good. It's part of my attire. Ain't nothing special about this. Mm. I, I'm not worshiping idols. Say it again. Your sorrows will be nah. you do. In worshiping, I like that, sister. In worshiping idols, material things like that, your sorrow will be multiplied. <laughs> Ain't we in enough pain already? Yes, Lord. Back ache, shoulder aches, arm ache, legs ache, nose aches, ear aches, tear, 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 teeth aches, <laughs> elbow aches, toes aching. Eyes half closed. You see, I got a red eye now. <laughs> your sorrow will be, oh Lord, your sorrow will be multiplied mm -hmm. when you worship, follow, love these idols. Mm -hmm. Bye -bye. That's not smart joy. You laughing and rejoicing because you got this crickets and stuff like this, but that's not smart joy. Mm. These things are fleeting. They can melt away. Put heat to them, they'll melt away. Ain't worth nothing. But the joy of the Lord. <laughs> and it rains my strength. Back over to Psalm 69. I mean 16, amen. Back over to Psalm 16. Who have I in heaven but thee? Or there is none upon earth that I desire but thee. Okay, amen. amen. <laughs> Thank you. Drink offerings of blood mm. will I not offer, nor take up their names unto my lips. Mm. Anything other than Christ, hear me, anything other than Christ and his crucifixion, meaning. His on this cross, mm -hmm. head hanging down, dying for you. His final mm -hmm. words, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what to do. Anything other than that, guess what? Mm -hmm. This another mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. This another God. <laughs> another Jesus. And if you don't mind, let me show you something. Can we turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11? Verse 4, that's a New Testament book. It'll be behind 1 Corinthians, which will be behind Acts. I mean Romans, <laughs> which will be behind Acts. 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians, what I said, chapter 11, verse 4. Chapter 11, verse 4. It'll be behind Romans, which is behind Acts, which is behind the big John. 2 Corinthians, chapter 4. Let's just go up there for a brief moment. 
I, I'm trying not to be long, but sometimes God just gives us. Chapter 4, chapter 11. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, mm -hmm. whom we have not preached, mm -hmm. or if ye receive another spirit, mm -hmm. which ye have not received, mm -hmm. or another gospel, another gospel, which ye mm -hmm. have not accepted, mm -hmm. <laughs> you might well bear with him. You might well bear him. Listen, listen to what he's saying now. Because we just said, if, if, if anything other than that is not Jesus, then Jesus has been crucified for nothing. And we'll crucify him all over again. So, so in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, it says, For if he who comes preaching another gospel or another Jesus... Mm -hmm. The Jesus who, who 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 is not on the cross. Oh, we know we got some people running around here talking about they name Jesus. They Jesus. They gods. <laughs> Don't know the cross. They'll never pick a piece of wood because they had somebody else to do it for. Them. Never walked barefooted. Never walked miles. Never broke a piece of bread and gave it to nobody else because they were too arrogant and selfish and and holy to give him by the thing. Even in taking communion, they didn't get nobody nothing. You better get it yourself or have somebody else do it. They ain't going to touch nothing. But they look the like God. They want you to worship them because God sunk them. Mm -hmm. For who's preaching another, again, who's another Jesus who had not on the cross, whom we have not preached. See, Paul's message in this particular book is about Jesus himself. The Jesus, the crucified one. Not no one else, but Jesus himself. Anything else, another thing. Or if you receive another spirit that produces or represent or talks about another Jesus, another cross barrier, your wisdom is not wise. Your joy won't last. Let's go on. <laughs> Which is not have not which you have not received or another gospel which you have not accepted anything that's not about Jesus it's another yeah. gospel uh. false idols that's what we're talking about false idols now then you might wear by him see Paul is saying to them in fact sin Became their tolerable and false God. <laughs> Sin became their tolerable and false apostle. Jewelry, clothing, cars, boats, houses, all of those things have become. They are false apostles. They are false Jesus. They are false crucifixion. Another gospel with someone other than Christ and the cross. That's what these things become. Because we'll go and stand in line for a pair of shoes for hours. In fact, we'll get there the day before waiting on the store to open up. Amen. God bless you this morning. We'll get there the day before sitting up tents. Waiting on the thing open there. before we get up and go to church on Sunday morning. Or get mm -hmm. up and turn our phone on and watch a service on screen. Mm -hmm. We'll do these things though. And we'll say, oh, service, service is too long now. We've already been in here half an hour. That's too long. And we'll get upset when the service only lasts 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Boy, that was short, wasn't it? Well, if it lasts 17 minutes, we done got tired already. What took it too long? <laughs> only on close. Another idol or another Jesus. That's wrong. So, <laughs> so, so you can have joy that's smart. Joy that's why. Just make the smart decision about whom it is that you're going to serve. Will it be God or man? <laughs> Joshua was asked the question. Whom are you going to serve? Will it be the God of your father? Will it be the uh, God of your father? 
or would it be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Choose what type of joy you want in your life. You want smart joy? Wise joy? The joy that Christ did from his crucifixion on that cross? Or do you want the joy that comes from material things? Let's go back. We're back in Psalm chapter 16. We are in verse now. I believe we're in verse 5. Yes. The Lord is the portion mm. of my inheritance mm -hmm. and of my cup. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Everything that I receive, I am smart enough to know that it comes from the Lord. Everything that I receive, I'm smart enough to know that it comes from the Lord. Everything that is good, I know that it comes from the Lord. Even when some things happen to me that are not right, I'm still going to give praise to the Lord for them. Hmm. Because I know that he is still on the throne, talking to God in my behalf. Mm -hmm. So I praise him. The, the lions are fallen to me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a godly or goodly heritage. Oh, did I get ahead of myself? Yes, you did. Amen. Back me up there. Mm -hmm. Thou maintained my lot. Thou maintains my lot. The lions are fallen unto me mm -hmm. in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. See, see, see. Christ's redemptive grace, his redemptive mercy. In other words, it just plain as of his death on that cross has declared me in a good place. It has declared me in a good place. Now, whether I choose, because I have a choice, to rest in that good place, mm. to wallow in that good place, to bury myself in that good place, it's another thing. See, because if I don't choose to rest in that good place that Christ has established for me, I'm not making a joyful choice that is smart and things that began to happen will not be <laughs> probable for me. My wise choices must be probable. Anything we do, even in the natural ways of what we do, it has to be probable to us. Not only just financial profitable to us, but physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually profitable. That's being wise. Your joy then is a smart joy. You can rejoice because you made a smart decision. A decision that the things that you do are profitable, not just physically, but emotionally, spiritually, mentally. Mm -hmm. I was just watching a program not too long ago before we start our service because you'll be, you'll be surprised what you can get from other people. This is why testimonies are so important. And the young lady made some decisions. And the decisions that she made were not profitable for her life. And the end result was that death occurred. Now, human mind trying to figure out what happened. How did she die? Human mind trying to say, well, she was this and she was that and she was this. And you, the human mind, don't know nothing. It's not smart to pass judgment on things that you have no knowledge of. This is why the Bible tells us to study to show our self-approval. A workman need not be ashamed who rightly, rightly, rightly divides the word of truth. It's not profitable to make irrational decisions. Because when you make an irrational decision, a hurry up, a rush decision, it's not probable because it could be the wrong decision. It could be devastating. So let's let's go on because we, we ain't going to be with you long. Let's go on to the next verse here. Amen. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Who have given me counsel. My, rein, my reins also instruct 
me in the night seasons. My rain will also instruct me in the night season. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. See, when I want to talk about something, and I want to talk to somebody, I need to go to the person who I know is going to give me not just counsel, but that's going to give me the right counsel. That's going to give me wise counsel. Christ praised the Lord for the faithful way he has provided guidance and counsel throughout his walk upon earth. I should be able to do the same thing. My joy could be in the fact that I can walk in the wise counsel of Jesus Christ. We go to school for 12 years. Now we go for a little on that. We got the preschool, the pre app, or whatever that stuff that comes along with it. So let's just say we got uh, 13, 14 years of schooling to get to a certain level. After that, everything else it comes along is for our growth, for our benefit, not for our depreciation. Jesus walked the earth. It said that Jesus was on this earth for a whole lot of years, 30, 33 years. <laughs> some people want to add, some people want to subtract, some people want to divide. Some people want 366, some want 777. And some people just straight don't believe anything. anything. But Jesus walked this earth for these many years, ever teaching, ever teaching. That's all he don't talk, 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 and talk. He walked this earth and taught me long than I was in school for those 12, 13, 14, 15 years of my early learning. He was steady walking and talking and teaching and, and teaching and teaching. And what did I learn from his teachings? What did I learn from my 12, 13, 14, 15 years of, from the time I started this preschool, pre-K and all that all the way up to my graduation? What did I learn See, what I learned is what I must keep on developing, making the smart choices, keep on developing to be the best that I can be. The disciples walked with Jesus from day one. They was ever learning. Unfortunately for the disciples, some of them didn't get it, period. Jesus said, they're going to come and get me. I'm paraphrasing this. And when they do, some of y'all are going to run away and leave me. The teacher said, some of y'all are not going to graduate. I hate to say this, but some of y'all are not going to graduate because you are not going to get it. And the reason why you're not going to get it is because your joy is not in the fact that you're making smart choices. Your joy is not in making wise choices. Your joy has been placed in the midst of tangible things. Idle things. The teacher don't want to tell you that you're not going to graduate. She don't want to tell you that. The teacher don't want to tell you that you just ain't going to make it, that you ain't going to amount to nothing. She shouldn't tell you that you ain't going to amount to nothing. That's not kosher, but she don't want to tell you that you're not going to graduate. But what the teacher understands that if you don't make the right choice, smart choices, there's a chance that you will not graduate. If we don't make the right choices, the smart choices of following Jesus' teachings, then there's a chance that his redemptive love for us will fall on empty ground. Your sorrow will be multiplied. It didn't say, what did it say? Did it say shall? What, what is it? Their sorrow, their sorrows. Shall be multiplied. Their sorrow shall be multiplied. It didn't say it may be. It didn't say it could be. It didn't say the possibility. It didn't say a chance. It didn't say that that, 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 that. It said it shall be. Meaning it's going to happen. Mm. It will happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. It ain't going to probable. It is going to happen. Even during the hours of sleepness and he, Jesus prayed and meditated on God's word. His heart had instructed him to do such because Jesus' joy remained in the smart choice that he made to follow the words of his father Jesus. Let's go on, let's go on. 
I have set the Lord always before me mm -hmm. because he is at my right hand. Mm -hmm. I shall not be moved. I have set the Lord all the way before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be moved. I got to set God first. I got to set Jesus first. They got to be at my right hand. They got to, he got to be there because if he's not there at my right hand, then my, my endeavors will lead me to destruction. Again, your will be marked. The wife had <laughs> surgery. The wife had surgery on her shoulder, her, her, her right shoulder. <laughs> many a time, many a time, surgery on the right shoulder. But yet still, she used that right shoulder, that right arm, because she know that that right arm carries joy. That right arm carries peace. That right arm is her strength. Hmm. So she used right arm. No matter what happened, what pain is, is, is saturated with that right arm, she realized I still have to use the right arm. No matter what is going on in my life, I know that I still have to have Jesus at my right hand. Feel bad. I have to have my joy stationary in the smart things that I do. You can have joy that's smart, that's wise, no matter what the pain <laughs> Come on, let's go. We can really close this thing. Therefore, mm. my heart is glad mm -hmm. and my glory rejoices. Mm. My heart is glad and my glory rejoices no matter what. Rise up in the morning, you're hurting like I don't know what. You do some stretches to try to ease the pain, but you realize you still got to go because no matter what, someone is looking at you for salvation. Someone is looking at you for endurance. Someone is looking at you for a meal. Someone is looking at you to bring home the bacon. Someone is looking at you to make them smile. Someone is looking at you to give them some type of joy. And you got to keep going no matter what. Realize that Jesus is at your right hand. Come on. <laughs> my flesh mm. also shall I rest in hope. My flesh also shall I rest in hope. Regardless. My flesh. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. I will not leave my soul. <laughs> Neither will thou suffer thine holy one mm. to see corruption. For you will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will you suffer your holy one to see corruption. See, Jesus didn't see corruptions in the grave. Simply because Jesus had atoned for all sins. So Jesus wasn't laid in the grave and just laid there until bones and skin are rotting off his body. See, we don't have to see corruptions. If our joy rests in God, then our death, our body in the grave is only for a moment. See, we rise. God calls us back to him. Now, when he calls back, that's a different story. <laughs> Lambs and sheep. Lambs and sheep. One of them be talking about bad, bad. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Because on the day of judgment, on the day of reckoning, you want to make sure that you have done everything that you possibly could do. That your name has been written mm -hmm. in the Lamb's book of life. So that when he called and says some going to the left and some going to the right. You can say to yourself, God, send me right. Make sure that you're doing all that you possibly can do. That when your name is called, that he may call you to go to the right and not to the left. Because the ones that are going to the left are going to the left. <laughs> You can have smart joy. <laughs> Neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. There was no doubt about him being raised from the dead. There can be no doubt. See, you can have no doubt that you can be raised from the dead. Why? Because most of us now are walking around dead. 
we, we are alive in the flesh, but we are spiritually dead. Our spirit is spiritually dead. We are walking around dead. Uh, what do you say about them idols? Uh, False idols. Eyes to see, see not. Ears to hear, hear not. Tongues to speak, speaking not. Legs to walk, but walk not. Just standing there stiff as a board, as they say. Spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. David wrote, he said, Lord, open my eyes that I may see or behold the wondrous things of your law. Open my eyes. Open my spiritual eyes, he said. You can be deaf. You can be blind. Your tongue can be mute. But yet you can speak the words of God. Hear the words of God. See the goodness of God. Because you're spiritually fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Spiritually alive. Your joy has to be wise and smart. Let's go. We can really close. What we got? One more verse here? Let's go. Thou wilt show me the path of life. You will show me the path of life. In other words, God will show you a path of resurrection. Resurrecting your mind. Resurrecting your thought process. So that your joy will be smart. Come on. In thy presence... Is fullness of joy. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand. At thy right hand. There are pleasures. There are pleasures. Forevermore. Forevermore. Go with me to Hebrew chapter 1. Hebrew is a New Testament book going back behind this, the, uh, the, uh, this, the, the this Corinthians and all that that you have read past before. Go back there. <laughs> Keep going toward the end. Hebrew will be read in front of the book of James. Right in front of the book of James, and I said Hebrew chapter what there? Yeah. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 3. <laughs> Long back behind Philippians. Chapter 1. Behind Timothy. <laughs> chapter 1, verse 3. Hebrew says, chapter 1, verse 3. <laughs> who be in the brightness of his glory. Who be in the brightness of his glory. In the, in the express <laughs> image. Of his person. Mm -hmm. And the express image of his person. Mm -hmm. And up upholding all things by the word of his power. And <laughs> upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself mm. purged our sins. Who had by himself purged our sins. Set down on the right hand. Set down on the right hand. And that right mm -hmm. hand again. That right side again. Of the majesty on high. Of the majesty on high. Who is that majesty on high besides Jesus? <laughs> Jesus. God. God. <laughs> Let me hear that again. Who be in the brightness of his glory. Who be in the brightness of his glory. And the express image of his person. And express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself. <laughs> when he had by himself. Purged our sins. Purged our sins. Set down on the right hand. Set down on the right hand. Of the majesty on high. Of the majesty on high. The brightness of his glory. Hmm. The radiance of God's glory. Hmm. Jesus. Not only sustaining the weight of the universe, but also main also maintain a coherent <laughs> a coherent ability to carry our sins upon himself. Mm. A lot of weight. A lot of weight. <laughs> a lot of weight. <laughs> lot of weight. Isaiah <laughs> 9, 7, 53, all that. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our people was upon him. The government of the world, <laughs> all that stuff was laid upon him. But he did it for you, 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 and me. 
Now I believe it's time for us to close. But before we close, let's go back to Hebrew one more time. Hebrew chapter 7 is time, verse 26 and 27. Chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 26 and 27. Hebrew chapter 7, verse 26 and 27. For such a high priest. For such a high priest. Became us. Became us. Who is holy. Who is holy. Harmless. Harmless. Undefiled. Undefiled. Separate from sinners. Separate from sinners. And made higher than the heavens. And made higher than the heavens. Listen to this. This is, this is the Jesus that <laughs> gives the smart joy. Mm -hmm. They give us this wise joy. Uh -huh. They give us this life. This this is Jesus. Come on. This is the Baba. Who needeth not daily mm. as those high priests to offer up sacrifice. Mm -hmm. First for his own sins. First for his own sin. And then for the people. And then for the people. For this. For this. He did once. He did once. When he offered of himself. See. Jesus didn't have to. Listen. Jesus didn't need to go daily to make a sacrifice like the high priests did. It is also in Proverbs it said Jesus was a high priest ever after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus was a priest. Jesus was a shepherd. Jesus was a bishop. All that, but Jesus didn't have to go and make no sacrifice like the priests did first before they could go <laughs> and, and make a sacrifice for me. He didn't have to do that. Jesus was the sacrifice. It said, Who needed not daily refer to a daily sacrifice offered by the priest under the old Jewish economy or the Jewish rule. And though high priests who offer up sacrifice first for his own sins. Then for the people. I got to cleanse myself first. <laughs> Maybe this is where this thing comes from. Well, 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 well. I got to look at myself first before I can look at you. I, I, I got to get myself right first before I can. I, 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 I got to help myself first before I can help somebody else. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me. Amen. I'm going to do me first. <laughs> then maybe I got something that I can do you. Jesus didn't have to do that. That makes me wonder. Why would I want to follow a pastor, a priest, or a teacher who's living like hell thinking they're going to send me to heaven? <laughs> I guess you heard that. Why? Listen to me now. Why? The brother said, he said, he said, these priests have to offer of a sacrifice before of, for their sins before they can offer up a sacrifice for me. So, my question is, my ideology is, my wise thinking, my smart thinking is, why would I want to follow a teacher, a pastor, a preacher, a bishop, a pastor, whatever you want to call yourself, to, who's living like hell, thinking I'm going to go to heaven. Preaching like hell, thinking they're going to they're gonna take me by heaven. They got more sin than I got and think I'm going to get somewhere. Why would I want to follow that? See, I have to make my joy be smart. I have to have my joy in wisdom. Minor prophet spoke in the Old Testament said, Oh, you rascals. Paraphrasing. You're so heavenly minded, you ain't no earthly good. You're leading my people down a road instead of up the road. You lead my people wayward instead of upward. Why would I want to follow you? You living like hell trying to tell me I'm going to heaven if I follow you. Oh, woe unto you, you hypocrites. That's not a wise choice. This is what Jesus is saying. So you are so full of sin yourself. And in order for you to pray for me, amen, God bless you this morning. You have got to be delivered. I 
because somewhere along the line, I think we got some stuff messed up. Again, this is why the brother says, study and show your self-approval. Just don't listen to what people say. This is why I often say, get your Bible out. Read alone of what we're saying at the still free of non ministry because we don't want to tell you anything wrong. If you hear something you think is wrong, let us know. Text us, call us, whatever you got to do. And we'll get it right. It said, those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people. That means that the sacrifices, listen to what I'm saying, it's unworthy. Uh, unworthy. I'll make it plain to you. You need some help taking care of a bill or something. Or you need some grocery. How about that? You need some grocery. You're hungry. You need some grocery. You go and ask your pastor to help you get some grocery. Or you ask me to help you get some grocery. I do it. But as soon as I get to you, I get to tell you, well, you know if you had to spend your money over here, if you know you had to spend your money over there, if you know you had to do this right here, if you know you didn't do it right there, if you know you had to do this, if you know you really should have paid your tithes, you would have some gross in your house. You wouldn't have to be begging me for nothing. And I got to let the congregation know about this next Sunday that if y'all don't do what you're supposed to be doing with your own money, how you expect me to give you my money? What kind of mess is that? <laughs> so these jokers had to, they had to go. And get their sins taken care of. Get the smoke out your own eye. Get the smoke out your own eye. Before you try to get it out of mine. So, and it goes on saying, let's go and read that, first, that second part again. The last part there. For, <laughs> for this he. And then for the peoples, for this he did once. Mm. When he offered up himself. When he offered up himself. See, Jesus did it one time. One time. See, every time Jesus, Jesus sitting at that throne of God praying for you, he only doing it because that's what he wanted to. When Jesus died on that cross for you, he only did it because that's what he wanted to do. He didn't have to do it. He said, I can call down a legion of angels and they would deliver me. But I must do the will of my Father. And in order for me, you and us and them and all y'all to do what we need to do, we have to follow the teachings that Jesus, the sacrificial lamb, laid down for us. That's being smart. That's being wise. That's giving us the joy that we need to go from day to day, from day to day, from day to day. He did it one time. One time he did it. He offered himself. Jesus' death on that cross, which was the atonement of my sins, my wrongdoings. Do you know that I do not have to sin? I do not have to sin when I, if I, do sin, it is a choice that I make to do it. Economics, social status, peer pressure, whatever comes up, it's still the choice that I made. Mm. It's still the choice that I made. Because no matter what it happened, how it happened, you as the judgmental society going to say you didn't have to do it. It was your choice. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. You're going to say that. Whether I did it or not did it, you still going to say you was there. They just didn't say it. So you had to do something. You as a judgmental society going to say it. So it comes, it's still the choice that I made. And Jesus made the choice to die on that cross for you, you and me. So, you can have joy that's smart. You can have joy that is smart, that is wise. Mm. David said it, Jesus did it. Mm. It is written. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Father, for this word. Again, we pray that this word is an enlightening word. 
that it will help those who are listening to it today and those who will be listening to it in the future. We thank you for the platform that you have given us to bring forth your word this morning and each morning that we're able to bring it forth. We thank you, Father. We thank you that we truly can have a joy that is filled with the smart choices that we make, that is filled with the wise choices that we make. And we make these choices because Jesus, our sacrifice to the Lamb, is at your right hand making intersection for us, proving to you that we deserve the fact that he died on that cross, or that your, your choices, you didn't make a bad choice when you chose to let him down on that cross for us, your only begotten son. So we thank you, and we praise you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, we thank you again for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you that those who heard and serve today, Father God, can be lifted up and moved by it, Father God. To do those things which are right and pleasing in your sight. We ask again, O oh God, that every door, every ear, every eye, Father God, who has seen, heard, and heard your word this morning, Father God, whether with this church, Father God, that still feel done in ministry, or with their home church, whatever church they may be. We ask, O oh God, this morning that they have heard your word and that it was a good word, that it was a word that is able to save their very soul. Mm -hmm. So we thank you and we praise you for it this morning, God. And we know that, Father God, that in you we have this life and we have it more abundantly. And we can make choices that are conducive, choices that are productive, choices that don't lead us to laugh or talk or complain about anything, but to rejoice in what you have done for us this day and days ahead. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name, we just thank you and we praise you. We just love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The book tells us that let us to hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. When things are going bad, what do we do? When things are going good, what do we do? We put a praise on it. We put a praise on it. We put a praise on it. God bless you.